everybody. It's good to see you all again. Well, I wish I could see you. I really miss you, but I hope that you like the story, Only One You. I'm here with my very sleepy puppy, Zeph, and we're going to learn about making some fish using some of the elements of art. First, let's look at uh, the same author and illustrator who wrote Only One You wrote a story called You Be You. I'm not going to read this to you now, but I did want you to just take a look inside the front cover. Isn't that awesome? Just in the front cover and the back cover, there's all kinds of ideas for different kind of fish. Well, fish that are made on stones. This whole book, as well as the other one you just watched, the other story you just watched, is illustrated by using fish that were painted on the shapes of stones. So we're going to use some of that same shape, and there we are with an element of art, to start our fish today. For this project, we're going to start with the art element of shape and draw the outside shape for your stone fish. It can be a circle, it can be an irregular, organic, rounded shape. If you're not sure what shape to make, start with your finger and just kind of think about how big you want your shape. I'm going to make mine about the big, about the size of the palm of my hand, but my hand might be a little bigger than yours. You want to choose something dark to draw the outline with so you can easily see it. I'm going to use a big thick Sharpie so that I'm sure you will be able to see my drawing in the video. Again, if you're not sure, practice it first. See about how big you want it. Because these are stone fish that we're making, you don't have to worry about leaving room for fins or tails. We're just making a fish that would fit on an irregular or organic shape. So I like to air practice first, get the shape that I want, and then drop it down. What's great about this project is your, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. What kind of eye do you want on your fish? You could have one that's very much like the artist in the book made. However, there are other kinds of eyes you can add. Most of them would start out as a circle. You can add a line across to make it look like one of these eyes that has a lid starting to close. You can give it still a pupil, a circle. If you're not sure about making your circle, you can always look for a coin like a quarter to trace. But Remember, these do not have to be perfect. They're meant to be unique and handmade. Look at your shape. What's going to be the front? If you want your face to be over here, your eye would be on this side. I think I'm going to have mine swimming over here. So I'm going to go somewhere near the top, but not too close to the top, and make my shape, that's that element of art of shape, of a circle, I'm going to repeat inside to make it like it has a concentric circle and again another one. I think I'll let that center one be dark. Wow. Go ahead and make the eye on now your we fish. need to make the mouth. These have these really cute fish lip kind of mouths. So if we look really close, they kind of look like a heart shape on its side. There's a couple of ways you can teach yourself to make those. You could make, depending on which way you want the mouth to go, you could make the letter, excuse me, the number three, make a line back the middle and connect the end of that line to the end of the number three. If I need my mouth to go the other way, like I will in my picture, I could make a backwards number three, or it's kind of like a humpy M on its side, Think about this line coming straight back and then connect. But there's nothing that says you just couldn't have a quiet fish and just have a smile line for your fish. Whatever you decide to do for the mouth of your fish will be fine. A smile line, maybe it's gonna have an open mouth.
Have some fun adding a mouth onto your fish. Now it's time to think about how we're going to decorate our fish, the body. What kind of lines are we going to use? Curvy lines, zigzag lines. What kind of lines are we going to use to create a pattern on the rest of the fish body? When you're making your lines, remember, you already know a variety of kinds of lines. You know straight, you know zigzag, you know curvy, you know lines that create a scallop, you can lay whatever drawing tool you have on its side and make them thick, or you can make it up on its point and make them much thinner. You can make them vertical, you can make them horizontal, or you can make them diagonal. You could make dotted lines, dots that appear in a row and imply that there's a line. You can make them dashed lines. Since you already know a variety of lines, make sure you keep your fish interesting by using a variety of lines. You can start at the scallop, at that curved line that you made. I'm gonna add a scallop to it. You do not have to make your fish look like my fish. I could make all my lines curve in the same direction and match. Dividing the body of the fish up into curved stripes. Remembering to create new shapes that I can color in. I could use some lines that curve just like the one line that divides the head and the body, but then maybe I want my lines to go back the length of the fish. Maybe they're not all straight going back. Maybe some are going to be wavy going back. Now it's time to add some color. Remember, when you color in a shape, go around the outside of the shape first, right inside of the line. I'm holding my marker a little bit on its side so I get a thicker line. And I'm going around the outside edge. Then I'm filling it in, coloring all in the same direction. This will look much neater than if I color all different kinds of directions. So you go around the shape first. Oh look, with small shapes going around the outside actually just fills it in for me. That was pretty quick. Okay, time for you to color.
For this fish, I pick colors that match the colors of my pet betta fish, Bowie. Here's my fish, Bowie. I know I usually show my puppies, but Bowie's a pet that you can see in the art room when we go back this fall. Can you guess where I got his name from? A student suggested it. It is short for something very colorful. Once you finish coloring, be careful and cut it out. Remember, take your time. Go all the way back into the scissors. As you close the scissors, turn the paper. That will help you get a nice, careful, and smooth cut. So I'm slowly closing my scissors. I don't close them all the way. I only close them a little bit, and then I open them back up. I have better control of the scissors when the paper is as deep in the scissors as possible. So slow and careful. As I close the scissors, I turn the paper slowly. My scissors are staying in the same place. They're not going like this in my hand. Carefully closing the scissors, turning the paper. And I'll get a nice smooth edge on my fish. If you want to check how you did, feel along the edge of the paper. It should be nice and smooth and not jaggy. That's a skill we practice a lot and it takes a long time to master. So think about it every time you're cutting something out. If you had fun making this fish, try make some more. Or have a friend or someone in your family make some more with you. Soon, you'll have a whole school of fish. You can arrange them and glue them down if you like. You can just keep making more. Remember, take a photo so I can see what you've done and post it into Schoology. I hope you enjoyed making that project. Ooh, looks like he's ready for a nap again. If you like that project and you'd like to hear this story that I'm holding up, it's in the bottom right-hand corner. Just enlarge the screen so you can see it and you'll be able to listen to another fun story. The story has some great words of advice just on, again, those front covers. Things like spend time with someone who makes you smile. Always look on the bright side. No one is just like you, and that is true. No one is just like any of you. You are all individuals. I miss you all very much, and I can't wait to see you back at school where we can make some more art together.